Hi there. My name is Isabel Valelli, and I'm one of the managers of the George Hall Early On Child and Family Center. I'd like to welcome you to the newest edition of videos that the Early On team has created. This is the first video of our parenting video series, and Carolina Montez is hosting the upcoming video on stress and adults. She is an early childhood educator who has worked with young children and families from diverse backgrounds for over 27 years in a wide range of settings, including daycare centers, family resource centers, ESL child cares, and the George Hall Ontario Early Years Early On programs. Carolina is passionate about providing innovative, inclusive, and culturally sensitive programming that encourages children's curiosity, learning, as well as expression. She has pursued opportunities of professional development that have allowed her to support parents and caregivers in relation to their children's development and well-being, which will translate in this video. Carolina has offered some parenting education sessions on stress at our center and was very enthusiastic about the idea of offering something virtually to parents and caregivers as well. Thanks so much and we hope you enjoy our video. Thank you, Isabel. So before we start, I have some questions for you. Have you ever felt irritated, worried, or jumpy? Have you ever had difficulty concentrating and making decisions? Have you ever noticed changes in your sleep patterns? Have you ever struggled with negative thinking and restlessness? If you've answered yes, like most of us will, it could be that you're experiencing stress. Stress, we hear that word casually thrown about in almost every conversation especially during these days when the world is facing a pandemic, and rightfully so. Today, we will talk about stress, how it affects our body and mind, and most importantly, what we can do to cope with it. Mm, but wait, what is stress anyway? According to Health Canada, we can feel the effects of stress when we face major life events like moving to a new city, getting married, or starting a new job. It can also come from minor daily incidents, such as standing in line at a grocery store, riding a test, or driving in traffic. Good stress, such as winning a game or going on vacation, can spur one to be productive and energized. It can help us focus, learn, and remember new things. Stress is a natural part of our daily life. Things that may cause you to stress may not have the same effect on someone else. Genes and life experiences may play a part in how we react to potential stressful events in our lives. The point is that we cannot avoid stress, and it's not always a bad thing, because without some form of stress, we would not be able to face the challenges of the day. Did you know that stress is a self-protective mechanism designed to help us survive? Really? Our body's response to stress is primitive and it is wired into us. It goes back to our ancestors in prehistoric times. According to Harvard Health, this stress response is known as the fight or flight response. It is designed to prepare our brain and our body to fight a threat, flee from a perceived attack, or hide from a predator. For thousands of years, human beings' greatest challenge was survival. They would face situations such as being chased by dangerous animals like a saber-toothed tiger, for example. Today, stress could mean looking for a parking spot at a busy shopping center on the weekend. Very different kinds of stress, separated by thousands of years of evolution and very different life experiences. But to our body, they are the same. Our brain does not make the distinction in the way that it reacts to stressors that are non-life threatening, like traffic jams, work pressures, and family difficulties. Our body enters survival mode quicker than our rational mind can react. So what happens to our body when our stress response system is activated? Why do my hands feel cold and clammy? Why does my stomach hurt? Why am I breathing faster? Why is my heart pounding? Is this what stress feels like? Yes, 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 and yes. Let's look at what happens inside our brain when we perceive a threat. When we experience a stressful event, the amygdala, an area of the brain that contributes to emotional processing, sends a distress signal to the hypothalamus, a tiny region at the base of our brain. This area of the brain functions like a command center, communicating with the rest of the body through the nervous system. The hypothalamus sets off an alarm system in our body. 
this system signals our adrenal glands located on top of our kidneys to release a surge of hormones into the bloodstream. These include adrenaline and cortisol. As adrenaline circulates through the body, it brings on a number of physiological changes. Our heart beats faster, pushing blood to the muscles, heart, and other vital organs. Our pulse rate and blood pressure go up. We start to breathe more rapidly, and extra oxygen is sent to the brain, increasing alertness. Sight and hearing and other senses become sharper as well. Cortisol, the primary stress hormone, increases sugars like glucose into the bloodstream to give us that extra boost of energy that we need. Cortisol temporarily shuts off bodily functions that are not essential in a fight or flight situation, such as our digestive system. Because we don't really need to be digesting a meal when we're running away from that tiger. This is what gives us that feeling of knots and butterflies in our stomach and even the need to go to the washroom. Cortisol alters our immune system responses and it shifts that power to other areas in our body that need it the most to keep us alive. Unfortunately, if our stress response is turned on most of the time, it means that our immune system responses are turned off most of the time. And this may be the reason why we may get sick easily and often if we are always under stress. According to the Mayo Clinic, our body's stress response system is usually self-limiting. And once the perceived threat has passed, hormone levels return to normal. As adrenaline and cortisol levels drop, our heart rate and blood pressure return to baseline levels, and all other systems return to their regular activities. But when stressors are persistent, our body and mind feel under constant attack, and that fight or flight reaction stays turned on. The long-term activation of our stress response system and the overexposure to cortisol and other stress hormones can cause problems such as anxiety, depression, headaches, muscle tension, pain, heart disease, high blood pressure, sleep problems, diabetes, memory or concentration impairment, digestive problems, and the list goes on and on. So what can we do to cope with stress? It's important to change our view on stress and think of our stress response as helpful. This can change our whole perspective. If our body sends us signals every day, we just have to start paying attention. For example, when we have an ear infection, our body sends us pain signals to let us know that something is wrong and that we need to take action. So we go to the doctor, find out what's happening in our ear, and we treat the problem. In the same way, when our body senses that we're experiencing stress, it sends signals to our body and mind to alert us. We may feel irritated or jumpy. We may feel that heart pounding and those butterflies in our stomach. Another amazing thing about our body is that it releases oxytocin, known as the warm, fuzzy feeling hormone. Oxytocin can induce anti-stress-like effects such as reduction of blood pressure and cortisol levels. It also increases pain thresholds. Oxytocin protects our cardiovascular system from the effects of stress. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. It helps heart cells regenerate and heal from any stress-induced damage. But what's really amazing is that the physical benefits of oxytocin are enhanced by social contact and social support. Oxytocin makes us crave physical contact. Our biological stress response is encouraging us to seek others and tell them how we feel instead of carrying all that weight on our shoulders. Our stress response wants to make sure that we notice when someone else in our life is struggling so that we can support each other. When life is difficult, our stress response wants us to be surrounded by the people that care about us. And in return, our stress response becomes healthier and we recover faster from stress. Now that we know the importance of reaching out to others when we're under stress, let's explore other ways to manage stress. Everyone is different and there is no single way to cope with stress. We need to find out what works for us. According to Health Canada, we need to start by identifying our problem. What is causing my stress? It's important to recognize that some things are in my control and some things are out of my control. When things become overwhelming, it's important to prioritize tasks and commitments. What can wait and what can't. 
physical activity is a great stress reducer. Walking, stretching, or doing simple exercises can relieve stress. There are also relaxation exercises such as deep breathing, meditation, and prayer that can calm the body and mind. I can also take my mind off my problems and give myself a mental holiday from stress by engaging in pleasurable activities such as gardening, reading, cooking together, sharing stories. This will give me some distance from my problems so that they become easier to solve. When we're under a lot of stress, many negative thoughts start to crawl into our mind, such as, I can't do this. This will never work. It's important to keep thinking positively and not being too harsh on ourselves. We can find realistic solutions that we can achieve by taking small steps. We can also delegate to others in order to lessen our load. We know that we cannot get rid of stress entirely, but finding ways to help us manage is key. We don't want to get rid of stress. We want to become better at stress. We have a lot of control over our stress, and if we figure out what is stressing us out, we can do something about it. We've talked about the harmful and positive effects of stress and how our body prepares us mentally and physically to take on any challenge. Our body gives us strength and energy that we need during those difficult times. We have also looked at our natural stress response system that sends all kinds of signals and cues to alert us that something is wrong and that we need to take action. How we think and act can transform our experience of stress. Choosing to view our stress response as helpful changes our mindset about stress and helps us cope. Connecting with others when we feel stressed or reaching out to others that need our support creates resilience and gives us that courage to face anything that life sends our way. And the best part is we don't have to do it alone. Thank you so much, Carolina. You're so right. We don't have to do it alone. What a great overview of stress. I'm reminded that it's a natural part of our daily lives, the fact that we all react to stress differently, and that some stress can be positive and productive, while other stress can be quite negative and harmful. And I appreciated hearing your example about commuting or even parking during the holidays. Managing stress is key, and I love that you focused on the fact that changing our mindset about stress can help us cope. If you're living with high levels of stress, you're putting your entire well being at risk. Stress wreaks havoc on your emotional equilibrium as well as your physical health. It may seem like there's nothing you can do about stress, but you have a lot more control than you think. Effective stress management can help you break the hold stress has on your life so that you can be happier, healthier, and more productive. The ultimate goal is a balanced life with time for work, relationships, relaxation, and fun, and the resilience to hold up under pressure and meet challenges head on. But as Carolina stated, stress management is not one size fits all. That's why it's important to experiment and find out what works best for you. If you would like more information on stress management, please do not hesitate to reach out to Carolina or any member of the early on team at the George Hall Center. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video.